accurate ways of responding to prophecy. We said Agabus releases a prophecy and the people start to financially respond to the word. Some words we, re we receive, we need to respond properly or financially to them. You can't say amen to what Agabus was saying. You needed to respond financially. <laughs> Are you, are you with me? You needed to what? To respond financially to, 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 to it. So, let us um, uh, read Proverbs 22, verse 3. This is my scriptures. Proverbs 27, verse 12. Proverbs 22, verse 3. Um, and, and, and this is my favorite. Proverbs 22, verse 3. Proverbs 27, verse 12. Those two are my favorite in the prophetic these are my favorite scriptures what does it say the prudent man foresees evil for see you remember yesterday we speak about the the, the 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 prophetic elements and we said that one of the things that 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 uh, the prophecy comes in a shape of a four telling word so when you foresee danger what do you do you don't say amen you don't say thank god god is talking what do you do? You foresee danger and hide. What it is actually saying there, it is that when you foresee danger, you take cover. When you foresee danger, take measures that are necessary. Build your, your life around that word by doing the right things. Respond accurately to it. Don't respond by amen. Respond accurately to the word. Respond what? accurately to the word so don't pray when you foresee danger respond accurately to it but the bible says that but the simple pass on and they are punished that word simple there is that is the fools they know about the danger but they keep going and they're punished for it so the prudent man sees danger and he hides in other words an informed person prophetically will see danger and take measure principle know how to respond to a prophecy know how to respond to a revelation know how to respond to the word know how to respond to it so there are a number of things that uh, we need to look at and and sometimes we respond inaccurately for example when Samuel, when he was hearing the call of God or the voice of the Lord, he responded inaccurately by going to Eli. He responded what? Inaccurately. So it is possible to get a word and respond inaccurately. But then Eli taught these men to how to respond to the voice of God, how to respond to the impressions of the Lord, the things that God is impressing in you, how do you respond to them? Not every dream that you must pray about. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So we need to, our leaders must teach us accurate ways of responding to the voice of the Lord. Every prophecy has a way that must be used to respond to it. Every. Every prophecy, there is a way you must respond to it. There is a way you must respond to, to it. Okay? Now, it is important to understand what type of prophecy advanced knowledge, what type of prophecy are we dealing with, and how do we respond? Sometimes you need to respond by repenting. Praise God. Amen. Sometimes we respond by repenting. A prophecy comes, Jonah says, 40 days time this city is coming down. God is destroying everything. How did the people of Nineveh re respond? They didn't say, oh, amen, we praise the Lord, we receive. What did they do? They responded by repentance. Praise God. Repentance. I'm going to say repentance. Inaccurate responses to prophecies, promises, and the word of the Lord, for example, dealing with money, makes us not to see the fulfillment. A financial prophecy does not need you to say amen. It wants you to respond. An economic prophecy wants you to respond economically. So first, you look at the type of the word. Secondly, 
what do I need to do about this word? The people in the book of Acts, they gave money after the prophecy was announced. They gave money, where we read in Acts chapter 11, they gave money where the, when the word was released. Right? Ezekiah responded by prayer. So, so, we can respond to prophecy sometimes by prayer, like Ezekiah. Somebody say prayer. prayer. We can also respond to prophecy by obedience. The word says go and destroy all the Amalekites. There's no need of seven days fasting there. You just need to obey the Lord. Go and destroy the Amalekites. Saul, not even any activity of, of, of sacrifice was going to be rendered accurate before the Lord. The, the, the best way to do or the best way to handle that word was very simple. Act on it and obey the Lord. Don't delay. Amen? Amen? And sometimes we delay. We delay. Some things don't want you to delay. You respond right there. Genesis 15 verse 6 tells us that Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. So some, some, some prophecies you need to respond to them by faith. Believe God. All prophecies are not the same. Praise the Lord. All prophecies are not the same. So sometimes you respond to it by prayer. We respond by faith. That's where now most of my people come in. Uh, what I receive. Yeah. I receive. So don't just say I receive. Look at the word. What type of the word is this word? Amen? Amen. And sometimes we respond to prophecy by repenting. Jonah 3 verse 5. Repenting. And at times, the other respond, at times we respond to prophecy by taking action. My millionaires, the wealth of the just has been stored for the righteous. You can't sleep every day at home and say, the wealth of the sinners has been stored for the just. You can't do that. You need to, yeah, you know, you need to respond by taking action, build structures, put things in place, do things. Faith without works is dead. That one does not want you to say amen. That one wants you to go on Monday and put structures in place for the fulfillment of that word. Okay? One of the, one of the ways of responding to prophecy, Deuteronomy 27, one of the ways of responding to prophecy is to say amen. But not every prophecy is to say amen. So shall it be, let it be according to your word. When the prophet, or not prophet, when the angel came and said to Mary, you are going to conceive and give birth to a son, his name shall be called Jesus. What did Mary say? So let it be to me according to your word. Okay? There is nothing that she needed to do there. All she needed to do was to yield herself to the Holy Spirit and the conception takes place. She didn't, she didn't have to do anything. She just needed to be available for it. We can respond to prophecy by building our lives around it. You can respond to prophecy by building your life around it. Matthew chapter 16. Whom do men say I am? Some they say you are Eli, some they say you are one of the prophets, some they say you are Jeremiah, and so on. Peter stand up and say, you are Christ, the son of the living God, right? And Jesus, what did Jesus say? That upon this rock I will build my church. Upon this, he was pointing at something. Ne? He was pointing at something. Upon this rock, I will build my church on it, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What does that mean? That means that there are certain prophetic words that when you respond to them, you respond to them by building your life around it, by teaching people around it. In other words, you do not necessarily uh, uh, say amen. You go ahead and build your life around it. 
you will see its fulfillment. Because some of it is not going to be fulfilled next week. It's only going to be fulfilled when the structures are in place. And if you don't build, for example, we have received words as the church, prophecies about the destiny of the church. I can't wake up tomorrow and see all those things happening. I need to start to build the church around that word, teach around that word, and, and, and position ourselves as the church around that word. The fulfillment shall take place. But when? When the structures are in place, build your life around it. Upon this rock I will build. And building takes time. Praise Jesus. Amen. Building does what? So we build our lives around the word. Build your life around the prophecy. Build your life around the word. And if we are not taught how to respond, we are just going to miss what God is giving for us. Praise Jesus. So we need to, to know how to respond accurately. Some people are just sitting and relaxing thinking a prophecy will work itself out. You build your life around it. Where you need to say amen, you say amen. Where you need to, 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 to pray, you pray. So, proper response to the word is very important because if you don't do that, you're not going to see its fulfillment. And you'll think this prophetic thing doesn't work. What is the problem is the response. This thing work. Amen? Amen. If a prophecy, a generic prophecy is released, they say, it is the year of entering into our own things. You believe that. You run with that. You take it and own it. There are prophecies, prophecies that are spoken generally to everyone. People don't take those ones serious. They want a personal. And there are people who are prospering out of generic prophecies like that. They take it and run with it. Praise the Lord. Amen. What do they do? Take it and run with it. Critical, 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 critical. They take it and run with it. Proper response to the prophetic word. Now, my dreamers, can you realize that it's far beyond, say, I had a dream, and what did you do? I woke up and I prayed. It's far beyond that. It's far beyond that. And sometimes, ne, let me tell you, sometimes a word is for you. It's not for us. Mm. Sometimes a word is for you. And I've made mistakes in my life where I, I, I release a word to the people which was mine. Mm. It was meant for me, but I made it a corporate word. I sense that God is calling us to a certain level of forgiveness as the church. Even as we deal with the issue of unforgiving, God will begin to push us even further to, uh, you know, you know. And the word of forgiveness was to do, to deal with you, not us, because we don't have people we are we are unforgiving. It was to 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 deal with you. So, also drawing the line in these words to say, is it for me? Is it for us? important right okay so proper response to prophecy will help us or position us for intercession proper response to prophecy will position you for intercession because god is not going to hide these things to you when we are resharpening our prophetic god is not going to hide these things to us he's going to tell us things but also remember you're not going to know everything Right? Prophets, prophetic people, you're not going to know everything. Mm. Sometimes God will hide certain things to you and reveal it to others. Mm. Because you're not the fourth member of the Godhead. <laughs> Amen? Amen? So sometimes God hides these things to us. But someone will be knowing. But you as an individual they can hide certain things from you. But those things that are revealed to you, they belong to you and your, to your children and to your children's children. Those things that are revealed, right? They belong to you. You can use it. And your children can also benefit from it. And your children's children can also benefit from it. So 
it, 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 it can also benefit people generationally. It can also help. Your, your, your life must benefit from this spirit I'm talking about, this prophetic spirit. You must benefit out of it. You must benefit out of it. It must work for you. Okay? So, prophetic intercessors, they know the heart of God concerning the matter. And they pray that heart and ensure that uh, what God wants to establish is, is brought to pass. Mm. 